3x plus 2x plus 3x plus finally you have a term 6. From the first two terms, you can take the term at the maximum that is x and the other two terms are going to be x into x is going to be x square plus x into 2 is equal to 2x and immediately you have a sign of positive and moreover 3x plus 6 from 3x plus 6 you can take at the maximum 3 common remaining x plus 2. So finally the common factor in the entire expression is x plus 2 so that taking x plus 2 common into the other term is here x and the other term is here plus 3. So these are the factors of this polynomial. Now we can understand one thing that for what value of the variable x this entire polynomial will become 0. If you once observe this is the product of two terms. When the product of two terms is going to be 0 either first term equal to 0 or second term equal to 0 of course both the terms are equal to 0. So, if you observe this first term x plus 2, x plus 2 is going to be 0 when x is equal to minus 2 as well as x plus 3 is equal to 0 when x is going to be minus 3. So, for x is equal to minus 2 as well as for x equal to minus 3, this entire polynomial will become 0. Therefore, the zeros of this second degree polynomial are minus 2 and minus 3. Here x plus 5 there is a single expression like it is a linear expression and 0 of this polynomial we are not talking about zeros of the polynomial talking about only 0 of the polynomial because the degree of this polynomial is 1 since it is a linear expression that is why it has maximum of 1 0 but being it is a second degree polynomial it has maximum of two zeros. Why am I using the word maximum of two zeros because if you observe one more expression like uh, I am taking one more second degree expression that second degree expression is going to be x square minus 4x plus 4 this is one second degree expression. If you factorize the second degree expression by splitting middle term method x square minus 2x minus 2x plus 4 then from the first two terms you can take one x common remaining x minus 2 immediately you have negative sign common and then from 2x and 4 you can 2 common and remaining x minus 2. So totally you have x minus 2 is the common factor and remaining term here it is x and here it is minus 2. What does it mean x minus 2 into x minus 2 means x minus 2 is repeated factor. So you can write it as x minus 2 whole square. Now this x minus 2 whole square will become 0 only when the value of x is equal to 2. So it means this second degree polynomial is 0 only for one value of x that one value of x is 2 only. But in the previous example like you have taken x square plus 5x plus 6. So this is a second degree polynomial will become 0 for two values of x. But here it is 0 only for one value of x. So that is why we can say that the maximum number of zeros of the second degree polynomial is 2. We should not say that exactly 2 is the number of zeros of the polynomial of degree 2. So we can generalize one thing here with the help of this conversion for the first degree polynomial as well as second degree polynomial. Suppose you have a polynomial of degree n. Polynomial of degree n. Polynomial of degree n means p of x is a polynomial of degree n. For example, a0 x to the power of n plus a1 x to the power of n minus 1 plus so on. So this is nth degree polynomial what is the maximum number of zeros of this nth degree polynomial is at most at most n we should say that at most n we should not say that exactly n we already discussed about that why is it not exactly n why is it at most n so this is about a sig single polynomial which is a linear polynomial as well as a quadratic polynomial now I am taking one quadratic polynomial equation. That quadratic polynomial equation is for example x square minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. This is a quadratic polynomial equation. More precisely this is a quadratic equation. 
and taking a quadratic expression that is x square minus 3x plus 2. So, this is a quadratic expression. What is the difference between a quadratic polynomial equation and quadratic expression? See here, which is equal to 0, something is equal to 0. Something is equal to 0 means there is an unknown, that unknown over here is x. So, this unknown can be found out by factorization method or by any algebraic method. But whereas, x square minus 3x plus 2 is not equal to anything. Since it is not equal to anything, there is no particular value of x which satisfies because there is no equal to something. Since it is equal to 0, means this entire left hand side term is going to be 0 for some value of x or two values of x or three values of x, it does not matter. That depends on the degree. Since it is a second degree polynomial, just now we discussed about how to find zeros of the polynomial. So, since it is being a second degree polynomial equation, it has maximum of two zeros. But when you substitute that zero, for example, x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 2, when you substitute over here, then this quadratic equation will be satisfied by that value of x. So, for what value of the variable, the given quadratic polynomial equation is going to get satisfied, those values of the variables are said to be solutions or roots of the given equation. Solutions are given, solutions are roots of the given equation. So, now whatever the zeros of this polynomial are said to be, the roots are solutions of this quadratic polynomial equation. So, that is only the difference between a polynomial as well as a polynomial equation. Got it? So, now we are going to describe more about this quadratic polynomial equations or quadratic equations and in different cases whether it is really possible to figure out the roots of any quadratic polynomial by splitting middle term method or not. Okay? So, let me take some examples uh, to identify the zeros of the polynomial if it is possible to find out by using factorization method or not. For example, there is a polynomial like x square plus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. This is one quadratic equation. And another quadratic equation is x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. This is one more quadratic equation. Now, let us try to understand, is it really possible to figure out the roots of the given quadratic equation by our traditional method that is factorization method or splitting middle term method or not. Okay? If you once observe, x square into 4 is equal to 4x square that is also plus 4x square. Will you be able to factorize this 4 into two factors such that their sum is going to be 5? Yes, obviously, we can write 4 as 1 4 are 4 and moreover when you add 1 and 4, you will get 5 so that it can easily be factorized by splitting of middle term method. Whereas, x square plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. This is one of the quadratic equation. Now, when you multiply x square and 1, that is going to be 1x square or x square and now when you factorize this 1, you should get the sum of the factors is also equal to 1. The only factors for 1 are 1 and 1, but when you add 1 and 1, you will get 2, but you cannot get 1. So, it means that it is not possible to factorize this kind of quadratic equations by splitting middle term method or factorization method. So, there is there any other method to figure out the factors otherwise to find out the roots of a good given quadratic equation. Let us try to understand this. Now, everybody has to understand how this scenario is going on and moreover what are the logical sequence of steps being involved in proving this one particular explicative formula to find out the roots of any quadratic equation. Right? So, let us uh, consider one standard form of quadratic equation. What is the standard form of quadratic equation? Ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Of course, there are conditions like a is not equal to 0, b and c all these three numbers are real numbers. So, by default ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 is the standard form of quadratic equation. Right? 
Now, I am going to find out the roots of this quadratic equation by using our algebraic identities. So, we have some algebraic identities which has three terms in its expansion. So, which algebraic expression uh, has three terms, which identity has three terms in its expansion? Let us try to understand what is the formula for a plus b whole square. The formula for a plus b whole square is going to be a square plus 2ab plus b square. Right? This is the formula for a plus b whole square. Like you have the formula for a minus b whole square that is a square minus 2ab plus b square. But in our formula, we have positive sign for the middle term. That is why we will try to understand a square plus 2ab plus b square in order to convert this ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 as a square number. So, how is that possible? Let us figure it out. See, the first term is a square. So, it is understood one thing that you will have to convert this first number ax square as a square number. So, how do you write ax square as something whole square? So, you can write ax square as x square is being a square number, but a is not a square number. So, that you can write it as square root a x whole square. So, that you can write a x square as square root a x whole square, but involving square roots as well as fractions in the given expression makes your problem so complicated. So, that is why just to avoid these kind of square roots as well as fractions, let us think broadly to avoid all these things and we will try to get this number as a square number just by multiplying, just by multiplying a fixed number. See, it is possible to convert this ax square to convert it into a square number just by multiplying because x square is already a square number, but a is not a square number. If you simply multiply by a, it will become square number, right? Because a into a is equal to a square. So, a square into x square is a square number. That is much easier than writing that a as square root a whole square. But you will have to think about the second term also. The second term is going to be 2ab. So, 2 must be there. But if you multiply by a, it is going to be a into bx, but there is no 2. So, that we need 2 also. So, it is understand one thing that you need to multiply the first term definitely by a as well as by one more number whose multiple is 2 and it should be a square number. So, I think you got that number, that number is going to be 4. So, that you will have to multiply the entire equation by 4a. Okay? So, multiplying the entire equation by 4a, then it is going to be 4a into ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 4a into 0. Got it? Now, multiply every single term by 4a, then <coughs> you get 4a into a is equal to 4a square and x square is also there plus 4a into bx is 4abx plus 4a into c is equal to 4ac is equal to 4a into 0 is going to be 0. Right? Now, let us start converting this into the form of a square plus 2ab plus b square. Writing this 4a square x square as a complete square number, 4 is 2 square, a square is a whole square, x square is x whole square. So, that you can write 4a square x square as 2a x whole square and then second term is 2ab. So, our a is decided. So, a is 2ax plus 2ab plus 2 into a was already decided as 2ax. So, 2 into 2ax into how much is equal to 4abx? Once you see 2 into 2 is equal to 4 into x is equal to 4ax. 4ax into how much is equal to 4abx? We left with b only. So, that our b is b only. Right? But a is 2ax, but b is b. So, plus the what is the other term in the expansion? That is b square. So, b square. But once you observe in this expression, b is not there, b square is not there in any term. But we, we want that b square in order to make this one as a square number. So, that for balancing, you will have to subtract it. Right? Did you understand? We are adding b square as well as subtracting b square because we want b square to make it as a square number. 
since we are adding newly to balance this equation you will have to subtract it and we left with one more term that one more term is 4ac so that plus 4ac equals to 0 hope you understand this right now if you once observe from here to here is in the form of a square plus 2ab plus b square so a square plus 2ab plus b square is going to be a plus b whole square and then the other terms are this is minus b square and plus 4ac is plus 4ac is equal to 0 right since we want the value of x leave this 2ax plus b whole square on the left hand side and transpose the other two terms towards right hand side then it is going to be 2ax plus b whole square is equal to minus b square will become plus b square and plus 4ac will become minus 4ac right since we want x so that x is located here but this term has a square so that when you remove the square what has to be done so here we generally say for example x square is equal to 4 when you see that x square is equal to 4 then if it is the point for finding the value of x then we simply say that x is equal to root over 4 but you will have to think logically here what do you mean by this x square is equal to 4 x square is equal to 4 means x is an unknown some number some number whole square is equal to 4 so you will have to think in such a way that square of which number is 4 so square of which number is 4 everybody knows that square of 2 is equal to 4 right but you will have to think more square of one more number is also equal to 4 what is that number yes that is square of negative 2 is also equal to 4 so what did you understand here square of 2 is 4 as well as square of minus 2 is also equal to 4 therefore when you are finding for x here when x square is equal to 4 you should write x is equal to plus 4 or minus 4 see here plus or minus that's why you should write plus or minus and then you put square root 4 because it can be positive 2 or it can be negative 2 so that's why you can say that it would be plus or minus 2 hope you understand what i'm trying to tell you because this is 2ax plus b whole square is equal to b square minus 4ac you are going to find out the value of x for that you will have to remove the square so when you remove the square you will have to put plus or minus square root please be very careful okay we cannot take only the positive square root it can be the negative square root also so that you can take the value here that 2ax plus b is going to be plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac correct but still you want the value of x right see this x is grouping with some other terms so try to make that x alone means make, uh, try to make that x as a subject okay for that first of all this b is alone transpose that b towards right hand side since it is positive b it will be negative b towards right hand side so that it is going to be 2ax is equal to plus b will become minus b i am writing minus b but already we have plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac but still we want we have 2a here so that this 2a is multiplying here when you transpose towards right hand side it will divide so therefore the value of x is going to be minus b plus r minus square root b square minus 4ac whole divided by 2a this is what is called quadratic formula to find the roots of any quadratic equation right so what is that formula to find quadratic uh, to find the roots of any quadratic equation so that formula is going to be x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac whole divided by 2a okay this formula is known as quadratic formula what is the use of this quadratic formula to figure out the roots of any quadratic equation i have written one quadratic equation there which cannot be factorized by using splitting middle term method but that can also be factorized that can also be found the roots by using our quadratic formula i will write this quadratic formula briefly so i hope you understand how to derive this quadratic formula 
right for ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 once again make a note of it that x is equal to minus b plus r minus square root b square minus 4ac whole divided by 2a correct so i will write that once again here for the roots of a quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 so that is the roots of the quadratic equation are the roots of a quadratic equation what is that quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 or x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac whole divided by 2a. See here it is having minus b plus or minus root over b square minus 4ac by 2a means you can use plus for getting one root as well as you can use minus for getting the other root. So, let me explain by taking one of the examples. Okay? So, for example, um, the given question is find the roots of x square minus 11x plus 10 is equal to 0. Of course, this quadratic, this quadratic equation can be solved by using splitting middle term method also. But since we derived the formula, let us see how far this formula work out okay, to find out the roots. And before you use the formula, you will have to compare the given equation with the standard form of quadratic equation just to identify the values of a, b, c. Okay? So that I am writing the quadratic equation in the standard form which is equal to ax square plus bx plus c. Now identify the values of a, b, c. What is the value of a here? a is the coefficient of x square. Then what is the coefficient of x square here? If nothing is there, then it means 1 should be there because 1 into x square is equal to x square. So that 1 is the value of a. Similarly, what is the value of b here? That is plus b which is equal to minus 11. It means the value of b is equal to negative 11. And the value of c is going to be 10. So the value of c is equal to 10. After identifying the values of a, b, c, substitute back in the formula. That is x is equal to, once again you write the formula, that is minus b plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac whole divided by 2a. Right? Shall we substitute the values? Yes. Which is equal to, first negative is there. So, negative. The value of b is going to be negative 11. So, that negative 11 plus or minus square root b square. Since b is equal to negative 11, b square means negative 11 whole square. Should not avoid that minus. Okay? So, minus 11 whole square minus 4 times a. a is going to be 1. So, 4 into 1 into c. c is going to be 10. Okay? So, whole divided by 2 times a. That is 2 times a is equal to how much? a is equal to a again 1. Correct? which is equal to negative of negative 11 is equal to 11 plus or minus square root negative 11 whole square. Negative square is equal to positive and 11 square is equal to 121. And then minus 4 into 1 into 10, 4 into 1 equal to 4 into 10 is equal to 40. So that minus 40 whole divided by 2 into 1 is equal to 2. Now understand this is which is equal to 11 plus or minus square root. Once you observe 121 minus 40. What is 121 minus 40? First of all, 120 minus 40 is of course 80 and 1 is extra. So that it is 81. Whole divided by 2 into 1 is equal to 2. You all know that what is the square root of 81 which is equal to 9. So that you can write it as 11 plus or minus 9 divided by 2. This is the value of x. But there are two values of x by splitting this plus or minus. For, for getting one root, you use plus. For getting other root, you use minus. So that you can write it as 11 plus 9 divided by 2 is one root. And second one is 11 minus 9 divided by 2. 11 plus 9 is equal to 20. 20 divided by 2 is equal to 10. So 
10 is one of the roots and 11 minus 9 is equal to 2 by 2 is equal to 1 is the other root. So, therefore, the roots of this quadratic equation, the roots of this quadratic equation are 10 comma 1. See how easily we can find the roots of this quadratic equation just by using this quadratic formula. And in the other case, we have taken one more quadratic equation which cannot be factorized by using splitting Milter method. So, let us uh, think about that uh, quadratic equation to figure out the roots. Okay. So, for example, I am taking that kind of quadratic equation. So, that quadratic equation is uh, like x square plus x plus 4 is equal to 0. This is one quadratic equation. In fact, this quadratic equation cannot be factorized by using splitting Milder method. Then I am comparing this quadratic equation with the standard form that is ax square plus bx plus c. So, better try to figure out the values of a, b, c just to avoid all such confusions. The value of a is equal to this is a x square, this is only x square, only x square means 1 x square. So, that the value of a is equal to 1 and b, b is equal to coefficient of x. Here, what is the coefficient of x? That is equal to 1. So, that b is equal to 1 and the value of c is going to be, what is c here? c is equal to 4. So, c is equal to 4. Okay. After identifying the values of a, b, c, let us go to quadratic formula and then substitute back in that. Okay. So, what is that quadratic formula? x is equal to, already we have written here, x is equal to minus b minus, the value of b is equal to 1 plus or minus square root b square, b is equal to 1. So, that 1 square minus 4 into a into c. Again, a is equal to 1 as well as c is equal to 4 whole divided by 2 times a, a is equal to 1 again, correct? Which is equal to minus 1 plus or minus square root 1 square is equal to 1 minus 4 into 1 into 4 is equal to 16 whole divided by 2 into 1 is equal to 2. Now, see here which is equal to minus 1 plus or minus square root 1 minus 16 is going to be negative 15 whole divided by 2 into 1 is equal to 2. What is this root over negative 15? We heard about negative root over 15, but we do not know about root over negative 15 because if negative sign is there inside the square root, then that number cannot be considered as a real number. So, that this number is not available in real plane, right? Then, where this number is available? This number is available in complex plane. So, this number belongs to the complex number system. And what exactly the meaning of this number? Let us try to understand. See, this is root over negative 15. You can write this root over negative 15 as root over negative 1 into 15, right? You can split that square root for both the two terms for negative 1 as well as for 15 and you can write it as root over negative 1 and root over 15 and you know what is the value of root over 15? It is purely an irrational number, but coming to this root over negative 1, it is not a real number and the value of root over negative 1 is named as i that is what called imaginary number. Why is it called imaginary number? Because it is not available in real world. Okay? So, it is available only in imaginary world. That is why it is called i. So, the, the fixed value of i is equal to square root of negative 1. So, that is the fixed number. You can remember that. It will not be changed. Okay? So, the value of i, wherever you go, the value of i is equal to root over negative 1. Okay, that i is called imaginary number. right? So, root over negative 1 is equal to i and root 15 is root 15 only. So, finally, what is the value of this root over negative 15? Root over negative 15 is equal to i into root over 15. right? So, if you write those two, those values in the place of root over uh, negative 15, then the value of this quadratic formula and the quadratic roots will become negative 1 plus or minus 
i into root over 15 divided by 2 right now we can split it into two factors sorry two roots those two roots are therefore x is equal to first one is minus 1 plus i into root over 15 divided by 2 comma second one is negative 1 minus i into root over 15 divided by 2 so these two are the roots of the given quadratic equation so like that we can figure out the roots of any quadratic equation by using this quadratic formula right and then let us move on to what is the relationship between roots and coefficients of a quadratic equation so roots and coefficients of quadratic equation means if you can understand the number of roots of a quadratic equation the number of roots of a quadratic equation as we already discussed that is at the maximum 2 ok so at the maximum 2 means for example the quadratic equation is ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 this is the quadratic equation and we already discussed about the roots of this quadratic equation now when the quadratic equation is given we know how to find the roots but conversely when the roots are given how to find the quadratic equation you should think in a different way that when the root when the quadratic equation is given then we know how to find the roots of the quadratic equation but when the roots of the quadratic equation is given how to figure out that quadratic equation let us try to understand with one of the examples that is uh, for example my quadratic equation is x square minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0 i know how to find the roots of this by using splitting milter method i don't have to go for quadratic formula that is x square minus 3x minus 2x plus 6 is equal to 0 so finally you can take one x common here so x into x minus 3 minus 2 times x minus 3 is equal to 0 so finally it is going to be x minus 3 times x minus 2 is equal to 0 since the product of two terms is equal to 0 either first term equal to 0 or second term equal to 0 so here the first term is x minus 3 so x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0 if x minus 3 is equal to 0 then x is equal to 3 when x minus 2 equal to 0 then x is equal to 2 therefore the roots of the given quadratic equation are 3 and 2 right this is the way of finding roots of a given quadratic equation now i am telling you just think conversely and how to find the roots of the given quadratic equation when the roots are given right for example the roots of given quadratic equation are in general we can take them as x is equal to alpha and x is equal to beta okay x is equal to alpha and x is equal to beta are the roots once you understand and follow the steps the logical sequence of steps in finding the roots of the given quadratic equation see here finally you got x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 2 so x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 2 means they are roots of the quadratic equation x is equal to 3 is a root then what do you call this x minus 3 because x is equal to 3 when you transpose 3 this side then it would be x minus 3 equal to 0 so that if 3 is a root of the quadratic equation then what do you call this x minus 3 it is called factor of the quadratic equation so when 3 is a root then x minus 3 is a factor similarly when 2 is a root then x minus 2 is a factor right we have two roots x is equal to alpha and x is equal to beta when x is equal to alpha is a root can we say that x minus alpha is equal to 0 and similarly x minus beta is equal to 0 so it means x minus alpha is one of the factors and x minus beta is another factor when you have two factors then definitely you will have to multiply both of them to get a second degree polynomial right because it is linear and it is linear so linear into linear will become a quadratic polynomial equation so when you multiply both of them then it is going to be x minus alpha into x minus beta which is equal to 0 perform normal multiplication x into x is going to be x square minus alpha into x is equal to alpha x 
minus beta into x is equal to minus beta x minus alpha into minus beta is going to be plus alpha beta is equal to 0. We can write this as x square minus alpha x minus beta x is from these two terms you can take one minus x common remaining here alpha already minus taken common so remaining plus into beta remaining plus alpha into beta is alpha into beta is equal to 0. This is what you call a quadratic equation whose roots are alpha and beta. Right? Now, we got one formula to figure out what is the quadratic equation when the roots are given. Okay? So, when the roots are given alpha and beta, the quadratic equation is x square minus x into alpha plus beta plus alpha into beta is equal to 0. And let us see what are what is this alpha plus beta and what is this alpha into beta. Since alpha and beta are called roots, alpha plus beta is called their sum. More precisely, you can call alpha plus beta as sum of the roots, right? And alpha into beta, of course, you can say that alpha into beta is the product of the roots. So, you can easily find out one quadratic polynomial equation or quadratic equation when the roots are given just by writing x square minus x into sum of the roots plus alpha into beta is product of the roots which is equal to 0. Right? x square minus x into sum of the roots plus product of the roots. Let us uh, take one example to understand this concept. That is, I just want to find out what is the quadratic polynomial equation when the roots are given. So, for example, the roots are, find out a quadratic equation whose roots are 5 comma minus 3 divided by 2. Okay? 5 is one root, minus 3 by 2 is the other root. Then what is the quadratic equation whose roots are 5 comma minus 3 by 2? That is what my question is. Okay? Now, I am going to answer this that is 5 is one of the roots better you can compare the given roots with the letters alpha and beta because we derived one formula in terms of alpha and beta. So, that one of the roots is equal to alpha which is equal to 5 and the other root is beta is equal to 3 by 2. Okay? One root is alpha is equal to 5 and second root is beta is equal to negative 3 divided by 2. Correct? Directly you can substitute alpha is equal to 5 and beta is equal to 3 by 2 in this equation. Then your required quadratic polynomial equation will become x square minus x into alpha plus beta. Alpha is 5 plus beta is equal to negative 3 divided by 2. Okay, plus alpha into beta. Alpha is equal to 5 into beta is equal to negative 3 divided by 2 which is equal to 0. Got it? And now this is x square minus x into, you just simplify this. Of course, it is a simple thing to simplify. That is 5 to certain 10 minus 3 is equal to 7 divided by 2. Plus into minus is equal to minus 5 into 3 is equal to 15 divided by 2 is equal to 0. Of course, this is your required quadratic equation. If you do not want these fractions in the given quadratic equation, then better take LCM. So, the LCM is going to be 2. So, that you just write here 2 divided by 2. That is it. So, in every single denominator you have 2. So, you can write directly it as 2 into x square is 2x square minus x into 7 is 7x minus 15 whole divided by 2 is equal to 0. So, of course, by cross multiplication, you get it that is 2x square minus 7x minus 15 is equal to 0. So, this is your required quadratic equation whose roots are 5 comma negative 3 by 2. So, this way you can easily find out the quadratic equation when the roots are given. So, till now what we discussed when the quadratic equation is given, we will have to check whether that can be solved by using splitting Milter method or factorization method or not. If it is not possible, then there must be some other way to find out the roots. That other way was 
finding roots by using quadratic formula. For that, we derived that quadratic formula also. So, by using that quadratic formula, you can find out the roots of any quadratic equation easily just by identifying the values of A, B, C by comparing the given quadratic equation with the, the standard form that is ax square plus bx plus c. That is for finding the roots of a given quadratic equation. Now, conversely, when the roots of a quadratic equation are given, then how to find out that quadratic equation? This is the way of finding quadratic equation. Finally, let us suppose x is equal to alpha and x is equal to beta. x means that is the value of the variable. So, if two roots are given, then how to find out the quadratic equation? This is the way of finding quadratic equation. Finally, we got it as x square minus x into alpha plus beta plus alpha into beta is equal to 0. Just to remember it easily without telling alpha, beta, or a and b or p and q, something else like that. x square minus x into sum of the roots plus product of the roots is equal to 0. So, that you can remember this formula easily because sum of the roots and product of the roots, right? x square minus x into sum of the roots plus product of the roots equal to 0. And we found out one quadratic equation by taking two zeros, one of them is 5 and one of them is negative 3 divided by 2. You understand? So, this is what about what is a quadratic equation and how to find out the roots of the quadratic equation and conversely when the roots of quadratic equations are given then how to find out that quadratic equation right so next we will discuss about some strategies to figure out the roots of quadratic equation easily okay let us suppose uh, consider one quadratic equation okay so, that quadratic equation is, for example, 200x square minus 205x plus 5 is equal to 0. This is one quadratic equation. Similarly, I am taking one more quadratic equation that is 176x square minus 177x plus 1 is equal to 0. This is one more quadratic equation. And if I take some unknowns as coefficients like a minus b times x square plus b minus c times x plus c minus a is equal to 0. See, if you once observe these three quadratic equations belong to the same category, will you be able to identify one similarity between these three quadratic equations with respect to the coefficients of various terms of x? Here coefficient of x square is 200, coefficient of x is negative 205 and constant is 5. And here 176, negative 177 and 1 and this is a minus b index square, b minus c index and c minus a. So, these three are three different quadratic equations, but there is a similarity between all these three quadratic equations. And moreover, if you are asked to figure out the roots of these, quadrat these kind of quadratic equations with huge coefficients, it is not that easier by splitting middle term method, otherwise by using quadratic formula. Then definitely there is a strategy work out, works out to figure out the roots you will have to identify the strategy. So, here in this first quadratic equation 200, negative 205 and 5. Once you observe the coefficients, first coefficient is 200, second coefficient is negative 205 and the third coefficient are constant is 5. When you add all of them, how much you get? 200 plus 5, 205 minus 205 is going to be 0. Similarly, the second one, 176 is the coefficient of x square, minus 177 is the coefficient of x and constant is going to be 1. What is the sum of all these three? 176 plus 1 is equal to 177 minus 177 is going to be 0. And similarly, first coefficient is a minus b, second coefficient is b minus c, third coefficient is c minus a. When you add all of them, minus a plus a is going to be 0, plus c minus b, c going to be 0, plus b minus b is going to be 0, so totally it is 0. 
what does it mean in these three quadratic equations the only similarity is sum of coefficients of various terms of x is going to be zero with the help of that we can find out a strategy by using our quadratic formula let us try to understand what is the strategy here so here we got sum of the coefficients is equal to zero sum of the coefficients means what in a quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c is equal to zero sum of the coefficients sum of the coefficients means a plus b plus c is equal to zero so what will be the roots when a plus b plus c is equal to zero that is what our task is now okay if a plus b plus c is equal to zero then what are the roots then if you identify the strategy behind a plus b plus c is equal to zero then easily you can find the roots of any quadratic any quadratic equation of the same kind okay let us see that when a plus b plus c is equal to zero okay I will take the quadratic equation where a plus b plus c is equal to zero, right? So the quadratic equation is a x square plus b x plus c is equal to zero, provided a plus b plus c is equal to zero, right? If a plus b plus c is equal to zero, then only we will have to find out the strategy. Otherwise, we will have to find out the other strategy. Okay, when a plus b plus c is equal to zero, first of all, what is the formula for a x square plus b x plus c equal to zero? Find out the roots. That is, x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root b square minus four a c whole divided by two a. Just now, we derived this formula. Provided a plus b plus c is equal to zero. From this, a plus b plus c is equal to zero. See, once you observe in this. Formula, a and c are together, but the only term alone is b. So that is why try to find out the value of b from this a plus b plus c is equal to zero. That is, b is equal to transpose plus a plus c towards right hand side going to be minus a minus c, and you can write this one as b is equal to minus of a plus c. Substitute b is equal to minus of a plus c in this formula. Then this formula will become x is equal to minus b. B is going to be minus of a plus c, right? So minus into minus of a plus c plus r minus square root b square. B is equal to minus of a plus c square is whole square. Minus 4ac, so minus 4ac whole divided by 2a. That is whole divided by 2 into a is equal to a only, right? X is equal to minus of minus is plus. That is a plus c plus r minus square root minus square is plus a plus c whole square. What is the formula for a plus c whole square? A square plus c square. Plus two a c and left with one more four a c minus four a c whole divided by two into a is equal to two a. Correct. So this is a plus c. So a plus c plus r minus square root. Once you observe a square c square are alone. So that a square plus c square plus two a c minus four a c is going to be minus two a c whole divided by 2 into a is equal to 2a, which is a plus c plus r minus square root. See here a square plus c square minus 2ac. A square plus c square minus 2ac is the expansion of a minus c whole square, whole divided by 2 into a is 2a, which can be written as a plus c plus r minus. Square root gets cancelled, remaining a minus c whole divided by 2a. See, a plus c plus r minus square root cancel, remaining a minus c that a minus c divided by 2a. There are two terms, two signs that is positive and negative. Now, for one root use positive, and the for the for the other root use negative. Therefore, it is going to be a plus c plus A minus C whole divided by 
टू ए एंड द अदर वन इज ए प्लस सी नाउ माइनस वेन यू यूज माइनस यू शुड कीप द ब्रैकेट दैट इज माइनस ऑफ ए माइनस सी माइनस ऑफ ए माइनस सी इज गोइंग टू बी माइनस इन टू ए इज माइनस ए माइनस इन टू माइनस सी इज इक्वल टू प्लस सी सो दैट यू शुड राइट इट एज माइनस ए प्लस सी होल डिवाइडेड बाई टू ए सी एनी कैंसलेशन हियर माइनस सी एंड प्लस सी गेट्स कैंसिल एंड प्लस ए माइनस सी गेट्स कैंसिल ए प्लस ए इज इक्वल टू टू ए टू ए डिवाइडेड बाई टू ए इज इक्वल टू वन एंड सी प्लस सी इज इक्वल टू टू सी टू सी डिवाइडेड बाई टू ए इज इक्वल टू सी डिवाइडेड बाई ए देर फोर द रूट्स ऑफ क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन ए एक्स स्क्वेयर प्लस बी एक्स प्लस सी इज इक्वल टू जीरो वैन ए प्लस बी प्लस सी इज इक्वल टू जीरो आर वट आर द रूट्स वन रूट इज वन एंड द अदर रूट इज सी डिवाइडेड बाई ए आर एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन कामा सी डिवाइडेड बाई ए सी इफ यू नो दिस स्ट्रैटी देन यू कैन ईजीली फाइंड आउट द रूट ऑफ एनी क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन एंड श्योर दैट ए प्लस बी प्लस सी इज इक्वल टू जीरो गर इट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी हेव टेक एन ऑलरेडी सम प्रॉब्लम सम क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन विच सैटिस्फाइज दिस कंडीशन सो लेट अस वंस लुक इन टू दोज टर्म्स दोज क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन दे आर फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू कैन ईजीली ऐडेंटिफाई एंड यू कैन ईजीली मेक सच क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन दे आर फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम टेकिंग सेवेंटीन एक्स स्क्वेर माइनस थर्टी फाइव एक्स प्लस एटीन इज इक्वल टू जीरो दिस इज वन क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन सच दैट सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन वट इज सम ऑफ क्वेश्चन इयर सेवेंटीन माइनस थर्टी फाइव प्लस एटीन इज गोइंग टू बी हाउ मच सेवेंटीन प्लस एटीन इज इक्वल टू थर्टी फाइव थर्टी फाइव माइनस थर्टी फाइव इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो हियर ए प्लस बी प्लस सी इज इक्वल टू जीरो वेन ए प्लस बी प्लस सी इज इक्वल टू जीरो देन वट आर द रूट एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन कामा सी बै ए देर फोर द रूट ऑफ दिस क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन आर एक्स इज इक्वल टू फर्स्ट रूट इज वन एंड सेकेंड रूट इज सी डिवाइडेड बै ए वट इज सी हियर सी इज इक्वल टू एटीन डिवाइडेड बै ए इज इक्वल टू सेवेंटीन सी हाउ इजीली वी कैन फाइंड द रूट विदउट यूजिंग एनी फॉर्मुला आर विदउट यूजिंग स्प्लीटिंग मिल्टर मेथड ऑलसो सो देर फोर इफ यू रिमेंबर दिस ए प्लस बी प्लस सी इज इक्वल टू जीरो देन द रूट्स आर एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन काम सी बै ए इट इज वेरी मच यूजफुल स्ट्रैटी टू फिगर आउट द रूट्स विदउट ए परफॉर्मिंग एनी कैलकुलेशन आई क्लियर राइट 